to, to say that uh, many are already um, um, doing the healthy lifestyle or they are already um, preparing the recipes that are being shown here in our virtual cooking show. So this afternoon, before we go further with our plenary, I would like to ask um, Sir or Dr. Alvin Alcoriza to lead us in our opening Okay, let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, we praise you, O Lord, for the opportunity once again to be with you, but most especially to learn something in taking good care of our health. As you have said, that whatever, whatever that we eat, I pray, dear Father, that as we learn from this, may we follow the blueprint of diet that you have prescribed in your words so that we may continuously help a, have a healthy mind, a healthy body as well, that we may discern what is right from wrong. And continuously, dear Father, that we would move forward in the ministry that you have shown to us so that we would be physically fit at the in finishing of your words. Continuously bless this program, O oh Lord. Bless the participants as well that you may use them mightily, dear Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Sir Alcariza. So before we go further, um, we will have a video by Dr. Keisha Rayner, care of Jessica, for her greeting. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Katja Reinert and I am simply delighted to help welcome you to this international cooking show. What a fabulous idea. We can spend time together to learn principles of healthy eating, enjoying the food that God has provided for us, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and all the different nutrients that it brings for our health. And in this show, we will be able to learn new recipes, from around the world, different cultures represented, and perhaps we can implement them at home to our families, also enjoy it with our friends. And as we uh, learn and implement this, I pray that we can experience better physical health, better mental health, and also a warm fellowship with those around us. So I'm looking forward to it. How about you? Let's enjoy it. God bless each of you. So thank you, Dr. Keisha Reynert. So now we will have the special number, care of Jessica Vicente. So oh. 
that special number. So let me introduce our speaker briefly. Our speaker, Dr. Chris Amar Anonchado, took her Bachelor of Nursing degree in Adventist University of the Philippines and later on took her Master of Nursing degree in University of San Diego, California. She also finished her PhD in nursing in, Advent in University of San Diego, California. She has so many experiences with her practice and currently, she is a member of the CVMD Field Medical Affairs Team and is a nurse practitioner slash diabetes specialist for the Diabetes Clinic. She also is the co-founder, content expert, consultant, and speaker of the Critical Essentials, which is a nursing education and consulting company. She has a number of professional activities certifications and publications in line with her nursing career. She also received a grant worth $100,000 for a diabetes research project with Sharp Chula Vista Medical Center. At present, she is a volunteer of various events by a triathlon club of San Diego and other events. And she also is the Health Ministries Director of Paradise Valley Seventh-day Adventist Church in California. Let us now give our un undivided attention to Dr. Chris Summer Anunciado. Good afternoon. Have you ever wondered about the entire world that could live within you? 
Well, I have. My name is Kristen Inciato. I am a diabetes nurse practitioner. I have my PhD in nursing with an emphasis in diabetes. But today we're going to talk about the fascinating world of the microbiome, that entire world that lives within us that oftentimes get neglected or even ignored. Let me share my screen with you as we go through this. Okay, starting with the front page here. So this is the world within us, the gut microbiome. I have been fascinated about this for many years since its preliminary um, research that I've read um, more than a decade ago, and I have building up in the knowledge on this one. So let us talk about your microbiome. If you were to come here in San Diego and come and visit me, I would probably tell you, well, welcome to San Diego. There's about 3.3 million people who live here. And then if we say, well, welcome to Earth, if we say to somebody visiting Earth, there's about 7.5 billion people who live here. But right within our bodies are over 100 uh, trillion micro uh, organisms that live within us. So much more than the number of people that there are in the world. And it makes me think about the story that Dr. Seuss wrote about Horton the elephant. He was just going about his business. And then he discovered, he heard somebody talking and what he heard was inside this little plant. And within that little plant was actually the village of Whoville where many of these creatures live. And there were many of them and I feel sometimes that I am Horton or that you are Horton and that the village of Whoville that we didn't know so much about is our gut microbiome. So when you think about yourself and the number of human cells that you are made up with, well, how much of you is really human versus the cells that is in the microbiome? If you were to think in terms of cells, you're only about 43% human. Because as you can see here, there's about 30 trillion human cells versus 39 trillion microbial cells. So now let's just then think about the genome. So many years ago, scientists have been able to map out the entire human genome with over 20,000 genes, right? But if you were to compare the genes of humans versus the genes of your micro organisms, then you're only approximately 1% human. So we can't really ignore an entire system that makes up so much of us as human beings. And, but oftentimes we do tend to ignore it and we act like they don't exist. So let's talk about the microbiome. Sometimes it's called intestinal microbiome or intestinal flora or gut microbiota or gut flora. They all are the same thing. Each person will carry about four pounds or almost two pounds of gut microbes. There's over a thousand species of bacteria there and there's varied, um, over three million varieties of genes. That's about 150 times more than the human genes. And about two thirds of the gut microbiome is very unique to individual people. So we really have our own unique fingerprint, if you were to say, in the gut microbiome that is unique to us. So let's take a look about the symbiosis that's going on, the harmony that is within our bellies. So when we talk about the microbiota, it's an ecological community. They live harmoniously together. They're symbiotic. They uh, are living in a shared space. And we know that whatever we eat and put in our mouths or whatever medication or drugs or alcohol or any things of that sort um, could actually affect our gut microbiome. So why is it important to pay attention to it? What is its role? It actually aids in digestion. It helps process fat storage. It also helps balance blood glucose amongst other many things that it does.
So if there was dysbiosis, let's say there's no harmony within our gut, what happens? So this is an illustration of the good versus the bad bacteria that is within our gut. When we say our gut, it actually starts from our mouths all the way down to our anus. So when you have dysbiosis and one certain type of bacterial species dominate versus others, and we don't have so much variety in the gut, it can lead to certain diseases. As you can see here, it has been linked to acne or eczema. It has been um, linked to GI disorders, to childhood asthmas and allergies, to autism, autoimmune diseases, different types of cancer, even dental cavities. And um, the gut microbiome influences so much of how we think and how we feel. And in fact, what we don't realize oftentimes is our gut actually controls our brain. So it's been shown to actually be linked to depression and anxiety. And we've mentioned diabetes earlier, gastric ulcers, hardening of all our, uh, our arteries, inflammatory uh, bowel disease, malnutrition, and uh, more importantly, obesity that has been linked to more recently. So let's take a look at the microbiome. So what is the difference between a microbiome of a lean individual versus the microbiome of an obese individual? So let's start with somebody who is slim. It's like a rainforest. There's so many varieties of trees. So there's so many varieties of different types of uh, microbial flora that lives there. Very diverse population. There's a wide variety of bacteroiditis. These are the microbes that actually break down the bulky plant starches and fibers into the shorter molecules so that the body can use it for energy. So when I talk so much about fiber and why it's important for everybody is because it's really one of the primary things that your microbial flora actually uses and convert into energy. Now let's take a look at the gut microbiome of an obese individual. We know that it's less diverse. The nutrient loaded pond, and there's very few species, but then those few species actually dominate over everything else. They don't have as much um, bacteroiditis species that break down these starches and use all of these um, uh, fibers into energy. They have low levels of Helicobacter pylori. Then these are the ones that modulate ghrelin, which is uh, a hormone that actually um, is a hunger stimulant. So let's take a look at the microbiome and the environment around us. So it, there's a complex relationship between food and microbiome. Some of the studies um, actually showed that an unhealthy, high fat, low fruits, low vegetable, low fiber um, prevents the microbiome from flourishing. And then they've also done some studies where they found out that babies who were not breastfed, but was given formula and are actually have, um, have uh, more problems as well as those uh, babies that are born by cesarean section. They're more at risk for developing obesity as well as diabetes later on in life. And then when we take antibiotics, when we go to doctor, we have a little bit of a sniffle or a little bit of fever that doesn't really necessarily require an antibiotic because sometimes it could be a viral infection. And of course, antibiotics are no good, um, you know, uh, for viruses because antibiotics actually really just target bacteria and they're two different things. But if we take antibiotics, it's like a fire. It's like putting a match in the middle of a very dry forest and it burns all of the good uh, bacteria that is within our gut. Now, if you then put a high fat diet plus antibiotics, that then increases the risk for uh, obesity. Now, when we say about, okay, so why don't I just take probiotics and maybe that would be enough to resupply my gut microbiome? Well, in fact, they're finding out that it is not enough. And there's so many versions of uh, probiotics out there and we don't know how long they've been out on the shelves. So we don't even know if the bacteria that's within those probiotics are actually still alive. So it's not enough. So we need to change something and we need to change it 
for um, the benefit of our health. So let's take a look at obesity here. Um, the link between obesity and antibiotic uh, use is very close. So there, here's the association. So if you see the darker areas on this uh, uh, photo here, you can see that um, the highest rates of obesity are in the darker areas. Those are also the areas that actually have the highest prescriptions for antibiotics. And remember in the United States, all of our animal products from chicken to fish to all of the meats like pork and beef, um, when they were alive, they were fed a ton of antibiotics um, just to kind of suppress infection. Hence, when they kill and people eat their flesh, then uh, humans then absorb those antibiotics. And hence, there's an increasing risk of antibiotic resistance in this country and even beyond. So how about, let's say, if you were to take two mice that were re relatively in normal weight, you clean out their gut so they're germ-free. And then one of the mice, you fed it with the microbiome or um, you do a fecal transplantation on one mice from an obese individual and one mouse, you give uh, the micro or the microbiome or the, the fecal transplantation of a skinny uh, individual, the mice, the mouse that was given the fecal transplantation from an obese individual actually will also become obese. And if they were given subsequently a fecal transplantation from a slim individual, they actually would lose weight. So there is a relationship to this. So let's take a look at uh, the effects of uh, a vegetarian or a vegan diet on the gut microbiota. They are starting to find out, and this article was actually published um, last year, that the microbiome composition in individuals who have been vegetarian or vegan are actually more diverse. Um, than the ones who are not. And so the goal here in life is to have a more diverse microbiome and you have more bacteria deities that actually will break down starches and make it into energy. Um, so that's one of the studies that we have. And let's take a look at like, what are the foods that actually affect the gut microbiome? So let's start on the left what's good for our microbiome and what would make them flourish and be healthy. So if you eat raw foods, especially fresh fruits, um, fresh or cooked vegetables, cultured foods are also important like yogurts. Um, there are now plant-based yogurts that's available in the market. Kombucha is more like a fermented uh, tea um, that's also available out there in the market. Kefir is made from um, cultured milks. And then of course, of course, cultured vegetables. So in a lot of the, the cultures in Asia that actually ferment, um, or preserve vegetables, that's actually very good for our diet. And it is worthwhile to actually eat them on a more regular basis, just like kimchi or miso or pickles or tempeh. Omega rich foods are also good for the microbiome because they have a lot of fiber in them that are a good source of energy and is the main food source for the microbiome. So those things are chia seeds, flax seeds, squash, beans, green leafy vegetables, and cabbages. Now let's talk about what is really bad for the microbiome. All the refined vegetable oils, I don't care if it's extra virgin olive oil or avocado oil, any of the oils is really um, still not very good for us. So we need to use them very sparingly. And although I do use oils in my diet, I still use them very sparingly. Pasteurized dairy products are bad for us. And those things are like either regular milk or cheeses that's been pasteurized. Highly processed carbohydrates. And what are they? Those are your sweetbreads. Those are candies. Those are chips that's in the shelves. Those are cookies or biscuits. Anything that's been highly processed um, is not good for us. They're actually a pretty good food source for bad uh, bacteria. And so when you eat these things, they actually then flourish and take over the good um, bacteria. Hence, then 
the bad bacteria will then dominate. Um, meat, poultry, and eggs, we've mentioned and alluded to that earlier. Added sugars, a lot of sugars are good food and, and the bad uh, bacteria actually likes that even more, and as well as trans fats. So when you're looking at a Mediterranean diet versus the Western diet, you see like an opposite or a reverse triangle here. So looking at the left side of the uh, photo here, you have high fiber, whole natural foods, but very little meat, very little fats, but the widest source of nutrients is actually fruits and vegetables, whether raw or cooked, that is the right uh, pyramid for the gut microbiome. On the other hand, you've got the reverse pyramid here that can lead to chronic disease. And those are mainly high intakes of processed foods that are very low in fiber. So if nothing else, if you don't remember anything else from the talk today, then think fiber. We need fiber and as much fiber as you can take. The American Cancer Society had advice that about 30 to about 50 grams of fiber is needed every single day to stay healthy and prevent cancer. So let's take a look at choosing our calories wisely. Is 400 calories really 400 calories? Does it matter as long as you keep to 400 calories? So let's just say, for example, you took about four tablespoons of oil. Well, each tablespoon is about 100 calories. That's a very little amount of oil. So if you think about frying um, a food group, in let's say six cups of oil and that food group absorbs approximately like a cup of oil, you can imagine how much calories is packed into that fried food. So it's 400 calories, really 400 calories where you get practically no other nutritional value from pure fat. And then you have 400 calories of chicken here versus 400 calories that practically fill up your stomach all the way to the top of different kinds of fruits and vegetables. And when we think about food, it is really the language that speaks to our genes, because what did we say? If we look at the genes, the human genes, there's really more um, gut flora genes than there are human genes. And the foods that we eat actually dictate what's going on in our microbiome and eventually dictates how our body will run. And when we look at different types of vegetables, if you just look at the, the molecular composition of each one of them, they're all very diverse. They're all different one to another. And that is the reason why we can't really pick one vegetable over another. What we really need to do is put the entire vegetable and fruit together and eat the colors of the rainbow. And just keep in mind that the darker the color of the fruit or vegetable, the higher its nutrition content, the, the more packed it is with antioxidants that fight free radicals, and they're very good food for your gut microbiome. Okay, now let's take a look at different examples. So if, what do you want to speak to your genes here is my question. Do you want the plate on the left side to speak to your genes or do you want the plate on the right side to speak to your genes? Because if you're looking at the plate that is on the left side is very high in animal protein. It has a lot of cholesterol. There are simple carbohydrates in there and the way that it's been cooked is also carcinogenic. Whereas on the right side, you've got a black rice pudding here. So black rice has, is very high in anthocyanins, very potent antioxidants. It has a lot of fiber. In fact, a serving of uh, black rice is about eight grams of fiber. Um, it's really packed with antioxidants and cancer fighting. And black rice happens to have the highest um, concentration of anthocyanins uh, that's found in the plant kingdom. Okay, now let's take a look at this other example. So which one do you want to speak to your gene? Do you want a uh, processed food like this plain uh, rice noodle dish that is uh, cooked in a lot of oil as well as mixed with animal protein? It's high in cholesterol. It's a very simple carb, very few vegetables in there. So there's not a lot of fiber. And as we know, meat even chicken can be carcinogenic versus the picture on the right, which is low fat, it's very high in fibers, 
it's loaded with vitamins and antioxidants and flavonoids um, and, and um, all the other colors of the rainbow is all mixed in there that is really good for us. Now indulge me with one other example here. So what do you want to feed your body? This is the picture on the right with uh, this, uh, you know, chicken with very little vegetables or the one on the right, which is tofu and it's a fermented type of food, a very clean high protein source with lots of fiber here, lots of color and eaten with brown rice. So I just want to close by stating a few things here. So in the Bible, when we look at Genesis 1, 29, it says, I have given you every plant with seeds on the face of the earth and every tree that has fruit with seeds. This will be your food. And that is so true. Plants, including seeds and nuts, are really good for us. And that also includes beans and legumes, sesame, corn, all types of foods that's very colorful, that should be part of our diet. When we think back in Adam and Eve, they were actually vegans before um, all of the flood happened. Before the flood, the lifespan of uh, people were about a thousand years old. Seven-day Adventists, if you remember on a National Geographic uh, presentation, um, who the ones who are mostly ve vegans actually live 12 years longer and have less illnesses than the ones who are not vegetarians or vegans. And let's take the example of people that live in the Himalayas, the Hunsas. Um, many years ago, they had no cancer, no ulcers, no appendicitis, colitis, heart disease, or even hypertension. They didn't know any of those diseases. What was the main part of their diet? They ate a lot of grains, they ate nuts, vegetables, fruits, and legumes. However, with the modernization of uh, of the areas in the in the Himalayas, um, the modern diet has now infiltrated the Hunsas, so they are now losing their longevity. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope that you learned something that you can take with you. If you have any questions, please submit them. I will um, collect those questions from the organizers. I want to thank Lelaine Alfonoso for actually for inviting me um, to speak to you today. I also have some videos that I have shared on YouTube. Lalaine and her team will be sharing the links with you. I hope you enjoyed some of the recipes that I have there. I really completely enjoyed making the videos and cooking food because that is my passion. And I hope to see you then. If you have any questions on YouTube, feel free to actually put in your comments and questions there. I will get to them. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chris Omar. So since it is a, uh, a recorded video, so you have heard that you can uh, just submit your questions. We have here a Q&A tab. You can uh, write it down, your question, and then we'll be giving it to her through email. So um, in recognition of her uh, presence, and her uh, video recording, uh, we would like to uh, present the certificate of recognition to uh, Dr. Chris Omar Anunciado in appreciation for blessing the participants of the virtual international vegetarian cooking show with a powerful and informative lecture on the topic, the world within gut microbiome. We therefore with sincere gratitude present to Dr. Chris Omar Anunciado the Certificate of Appreciation for your service as resource speaker given this ninth day of July in the year of our Lord, 2020. Signed by our President, SSD, Samuel Saw, Executive Secretary, Sarudi Baloyo, Treasurer, Max Lange, and our very own Health Ministries Director, Dr. Maria Rizalin C. Alfanos. So now we will be um, having a short break, uh, maybe two.
two to three minutes and we will now proceed to our second part, our cooking show. So you can uh, meet and greet your fellow colleagues or friends from all over the world. Tell them to turn on their videos. Please turn on your video so everyone, so we can see you. And you can greet each other for, uh, for some uh, short minutes before we proceed to our second part. Welcome South Bangladesh Mission. Thank you for coming. Hello, ma'am, Kisha. Hi, Daniela, Biel. Welcome, sir, Pastor Sosarni from Myanmar. Hi, Mom Lei. Hello. We also have Pastor Connis. Hello, Pastor from Singapore. We also have Mom Ninfa Bindasano. Hello, ma'am. Hi. Hello, Ninfa. Hi. <laughs> so long. We also have here Pastor Jimmy Havilar from Indonesia. From West Indonesia. Nakamute ka pa, Pastor. <laughs> Hello, have a good. Hello. Nice Hello, everybody. To meet you. God bless you. God bless Hello, Mom Nea. Hello. from Pakistan. Hello, everyone. Mom Ellen. Welcome. <sighs> okay, hi, everyone. From Malaysia. From Malaysia. From Malaysia, West Malaysia. Mom Nan Sung Wai, welcome. Yes. Hello. Hello, Hi, Biel. Biel again, she will uh, be one of our chefs for our cooking show. Say hi, Biel. Hi. Hello, Atia. Hello. We have Ma'am Gladens from Bicol. She's one of our medical missionaries. Welcome, Ma'am Gladens. Ah. We also have Onyx Dakila. He was one of our chefs from our first session last week. Hi, Pa. Hello. Hello, Ne. Okay, so now I think we have to start our second um, second part of this virtual cooking show so um for this uh cooking show for this second session we have um, a cute young kid who i will be introducing later on who will be cooking for us this afternoon and also um we have um different countries who will be showcasing the recipes and um 
we have Pakistan, we have Malaysia, we have Singapore, and we also have um, the part from Mindanao. And um, later we will be seeing them and we will be showing you the recipes. And um, okay, let's begin with a special number, care of Jessica Bissell. Thank you very much for that uh, wonderful song. So now we will be showing you the cooking show from Malaysia Peninsula, care of Mom Ellen Nathan. Thank you. 
green smoothie. So the things you needed for green smoothie is spinach, cilantro, parsley, a green apple, one green apple, and half a lemon, celery, pear, and banana. So now we put water in a jar. We're going to blend it. And we put a, all the leaves in the blender. And some cilantro. And the parsley. We're going to blend them together. After we blend all the leaf, we are going to put all the fruits. The green apple, and the lemon, and the celery. This is a green smoothie. This is a very healthy green smoothie for my health. This is a alkaline red bean dumpling. Use one kilogram of uh, glutinous rice and two big tablespoon of uh, alkaline water or lime water. Then here is that uh, while waiting, uh, we will boil the dumpling leaves so that it soften and also in a way to sterilize and clean up the leaves. So this is the rice after let soaking with the alkaline water and then add two tablespoons of cooking oil and see the color is yellow and then this is the red bean sweet paste and after boiling the leaf and the strap and the thread to tie the uh, dumpling so now we are ready to wrap so now we start wrapping the dumpling first get two leaves and then we fold into a cone okay fold into the cone then we we'll place a little bit of rice inside and uh, and get a bit of the red bean paste inside there and then get some more rice then we just then we just uh, just wrap, see like that. So just wrap like that and make a triangular shape and fold over. Okay. Again, get the two leaves, 
choose a smooth one on the up and just do a cone okay then put some rice inside the boil and then we can start put into the boiling water see now the water is boiling hot so we are going to put all this dumpling slowly into the water and uh, it should be boiled for about two to two and a half hours if nowadays some some people they use the pressure cooker the pressure cooker you have to put place all this dumpling in the pressure cooker nicely then only put water into cover the dumpling then you can just pressure cook for 45 minutes but I think the traditional way of cooking will give you more flavor. That's what I think. And that's it. We'll wait for the dumpling to be cooked. I'm going to show you how to make vegan tuna sandwich. Vegan tuna sandwich uh, is, a, is, a, is a tuna a kind of a flavor that's made by chickpea and we're going to put it in a bread. We're going to eat like a sandwich. It's very delicious and very healthy. So now I'm going to show you how to make it, the tuna sandwich. At first, with the, uh, the chickpea, we have to put it in a food processor to break it to the small pieces.
you're going to edit everything together. This is the celery. I already chopped it. So we will put it in a chickpea. We're going to all mix together. This is the celery. I already chopped celery. And this is the chopped onion. I'm going to put it inside that uh, chickpea also.
for your breakfast, for your lunch, or for your dinner sometimes. You can bring it for your potluck or for your picnic. It's very healthy and very delicious. You can see inside how it looks like. It's very delicious and very healthy. Thank you very much for that. A great combo, green smoothie and a vegan tuna sandwich. So um, I was supposed to introduce our um, health director from Malaysia, Ma'am Ellen Nathan, but uh, we will be doing this now, for now. Ma'am Ellen Nathan, are you there? Please uh, introduce our chefs. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. And uh, I really want to thank our chefs for a job well done. Uh, the first uh, smoothie and the smoothie and the tuna sandwich, vegan tuna sandwich was done by Chef uh, Philomena Davis. Uh, Philo, are you in here? She she is in here, but I can't seem to. She can see us, but she cannot. Uh, how do you call it? She cannot uh, seem to get into. The, she is in here, but she can't seem to get in. I don't know why. And the next chef is Dr. Ko. Actually, uh, Ko Dengwa is a doctor, but he loves cooking and he's got a YouTube uh, site of his own. Uh, Dr. Ko, are you here? Yes. Yes. Okay, show yourself. Yeah. There you go. This is Dr. Ko and he made the rice dumpling. So he's in his office, he's actually working now. So he's uh, taken some time off. And uh, uh, the, <laughs> Dr. Lalane saying hi to you. Hi. Yeah, thank you, doctor. Can we wave? Can we it's wave? wave now. Yeah. Can we all wave to the good doctor for hi. Wave your hand, doc. Hi, hi, hi. hi. Yeah. All of us, all of us, wave to the doctor. Oh, all of us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. Thank, Thank you. you for Alan uh, who, who asked me to do something like that. So I'm just coincidentally, I'm doing it. So I just record down and send to her. Okay. Thank you, doc. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. So anyone got any questions or not? Any um, questions? Uh, they can actually answer your question. Yes, do you have any questions regarding the video that has been shown? Okay, I know. Um, oh, I think we have here, ma'am. Yes, I know some was it, some of the words were not clear. That is one that I saw. Uh, but actually, uh, they say a picture uh, tells a thousand words. So um, the recipes will be given, right, Kezia? I, uh, we have maybe, the recipes. Maybe we can show for a while. I have got the recipes. Um, let me see. Maybe we can show the recipe. Okay. And, you have uh, the recipe? You can show them the recipe. Yeah. Show it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, um, it's loading. My my internet is not that stable. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Um. Uh, maybe Jessica, can you uh, show the the recipes? Mine is not not coming out. Okay, wait. It's not coming out. Okay, so maybe, ma'am. Um, thank you yeah. very much. But um, um, we will be posting this. But actually, it's already posted in our official Facebook page in Adventist Health Ministries Department, SSD. Mm -hmm. It's already there. You can check it out. All our recipes from session one to up to now, the recipes are already posted. So if you have uh, any more questions, I think, ma'am, we have questions here. One question is... Um, what does the mushroom seasoning comprise? Does it contain MSG? Usually the labels of these packs are not readable. So, Mom, Ellen, can you answer it? Seasonings. It depends. That's right. Some mushroom seasoning has got MSG. Um, but usually, uh, best is um, mushroom seasoning. Well, you can actually make your own mushroom seasoning also. They do have uh, recipes for that also. But if you are buying mushroom uh, seasoning itself, there are some without seasoning. There are. So you uh, can either ask the uh, people that are selling it in that store uh, um, that you want one without the MSG. Uh, they do have, especially in organic shops. They are quite careful, the organic shops. They usually have it without uh, MSG. Okay. So thank you, Mom Ellen. So because of that, uh, we would like to present this certificate of appreciation to um, certificate of appreciation from the Health Ministries Department. This is for uh, uh, oh. Sir Ko Seng Wa for your outstanding performance in the cooking show section of the Virtual International Vegetarian Cooking Show. We sincerely appreciate your efficient and detailed way of demonstrating to us the proper way to prepare and cook vegetarian and vegan meals such as tuna vegan sandwich, red bean dumpling, and green smoothie. Given this ninth day of July 2020, signed by our president of SSD, Samuel Saw, Executive Secretary, Sir Rudy Baloyo, Treasurer, Max Lange, and our Health Ministries Director, Dr. Maria Rizalin C. Alphonse. So thank you very much, Sir Saw, so, for, um, for sharing this recipe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ko. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> thank you very much, Ma'am Ellen and Sir Ko, and uh, as well as Ma'am Hello. Uh, I know that she is seeing us right now, yes, but yes. okay. So we greatly appreciate your um, your presence and for sharing us this helpful, a uh, healthy recipes. So now Thank we will you. be proceeding to our next um, country. Let's go to um, Malaysia, uh, to um, to Biel, our very own um, country in the Philippines. So Vial will be introducing her her recipe. Hi Vial. So here is our cute chef, Daniela Vial Alcoriza. So our is your mom there? Yes. Hi mom. Mom, can you introduce the the recipe? And uh, give a little background about this um, this uh, recipes that you have um, you have you will be showing us. Oh, okay. So this afternoon, Paul Viel will be showing two recipes. One is her favorite um, soft chewy cookie. This is very simple. It's a no bake cookie. 
This is what she loved eating. This is why she really know how to make this one. <laughs> and the next one, she'll be sharing one of her favorite lunch naman. It's the vegetable rice, rice. bowl. So yeah, uh, uh, these two are her favorite. So she really know how to prepare it. <laughs> so this is what she's chosen to be sharing for this afternoon. We hope you all be blessed by this video. Okay, so um, I will also be introducing our um, a little chef for this afternoon, a little background about her interest in a uh, healthy cooking. So. Danielle, Daniela Biel Alcoriza is the eldest of the two children of Dr. Alvin and Bell Alcoriza. She is her mom and her dad's little happy helper and a very loving ate to her baby brother, Hello. Gabriel. Biel was born on Hello. May 25, 2014 and just turned six years old. Her mother being a vegetarian since 2007, and transitioned to simple plant-based whole food sources in 2011, prepared for her pregnancy and sustained Biel's needs of breast milk until she was weaned off when she was four years old. Since conception, Biel had nothing but plant-based whole food sources except for breast milk. She enjoys eating fresh fruits and among her favorite includes watermelon, cantaloupe, honeydew, mango, ripe, jackfruit, banana, rambutan, dragon fruit, persimmon, and many more. She also loves vegetables and her favorite includes patola or bottle gourd, malunggay, spinach, and broccoli, and beans, especially lentils and chickpeas. She also enjoys jogging with her dad and mom and little Gabriel. She said that her favorite time of the day is family worship time during morning and evening whether at home or out in the nature wherein they all sit together and sing hymns and learn more about the God, the God of love. Her parents' holistic approach of, to health and well-being is a result of the mighty works of God. A closer walk with him, a genuine appreciation of the beautiful character of God and a deep conviction of the truth found in God's word. And by God's amazing grace, Biel and her family is a work in progress in the arms of the Almighty. Biel and her parents and baby brother Gabriel currently resides in Pagudpod, Ilocos Norte. They were there since October 2015, where they were led and inspired by God to serve. So that's the background of our chef, Biel, and her family. So um, we, will be, we will be showing now the video the cooking video of Biel but before okay
Then in a mixing bowl, pour the oatmeal flour. Next, add the ripe bananas and with the help of mommy or daddy, mash it all. with the oatmeal flour. Mix, mix, mix! Then add the pineapple bits, shredded carrots, and raisins. Table not okay. Oh. Keep mixing! Now it's time to scoop the mixture and mold into your desired cookie size.
once finished, it may now be served. This is our lunch prepared. Bon appetit! This vegetable rice bowl is for me and my brother Gabriel. for this food and for making us healthy. We love you po in Jesus name. Amen. This is me preparing my brother's vegetable rice bowl. We are reminded from 1 Corinthians 3.16 that says, No ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And in 1 Corinthians 10.31 that says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. very much Viel and for her cute little brother Gabriel so um, this is a, a great um, inspiration to all parents who have small kids and even those who have uh, kids in, uh, in their teenage years or um, older to start young to, to start young in um, feeding them with healthy foods and look how Viel and her brother enjoyed the vegetarian meal very simple meal but very healthy so yeah thank you very much for that uh, video and for cooking for us with your mom so do we have any questions for biel and of course her mom who is with her Hello po. Hi Viel and mom. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon po. Thank you po. Was a privilege to share. Thank you very much. So we don't have any questions, but we would like to, to thank you very much for gracing us with, uh, uh, with your presence, with your cuteness, and for um, sharing us um, simple meals but healthy meals. So now I would like to present the Certificate of Appreciation to Daniela Biel Alcariza for your outstanding performance in the cooking show section of the Virtual International Vegetarian Cooking Show. We sincerely appreciate your efficient and detailed way of demonstrating to us the proper way to prepare and cook vegetarian and vegan meals such as soft, chewy cookies and vegetable rice bowls. Given this ninth day of July 2020, signed by our president, Pastor Samuel Saw, Executive Secretary Sir Rudy Baloyo, Treasurer Sir Max Lange, and our Health Ministries Director, Dr. Maria Rizalin C. Alfanoso. So this is for you, Biel. I hope that you can uh, inspire more Welcome, you can inspire more people or young kids to enjoy uh, these vegetables and fruits. So thank you very much. So now we will be um, showing to you uh, the recipes. So we will just go through the recipes that uh, Biel has um, cooked in her cooking show. 
Okay, so we have here the soft chewy cookies and the vegetable rice bowl. Okay, so um, this will, um, these are already posted in our um, Facebook page in Adventist Health Ministries SSD uh, Facebook page. You can go through these uh, recipes and you can try it in your homes. These re recipes are very simple. Uh, you can try it. Um, you can um, let your kids cook also with you so that they can enjoy in, in a young age these um, this healthy recipes. So now um, we will um, go to another country. We have here, thank you, Biel. We have here um, Pakistan, um, care of Mam Nayab Nathab. Mam Nayab. She will be introducing the recipe and um, the chefs who will be cooking. Hi, Ma'am Nayab. So, Ma'am Nayab is our health director, ministries director in Pakistan. She will be introducing the recipe, the recipes that they have um, showcased. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we are just going to uh, share the recipe is about the mixed vegetable uh, with chapati. And uh, our, this is our tradition about the roti. Roti is made in every meal of here in Pakistan. And with lassi, it's made by yogurt. And it also, we usually use in afternoon for a healthy drink. So, Ma'am Kisha, please share the screen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mehta. You, know, you have given me the opportunity to go to this show. 
and uh, I'm very happy to be a part of this show. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So, Beta, what are you going to cook for us today? Today, I'm going to cook mixed vegetable uh, curry in a Pakistani style. And uh, with that, I'm going to make chapati uh, in our language, we call it roti. And uh, in profession trade, we have a lassi. And a lassi, lassi is made from, from yogurt, salt, and water. And in dessert, we have uh, rice pudding. Uh, in our language, we call it filmy. OK, Mehta, are you ready? Yes. So we can begin the program with prayer. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity where we can share with our global family the blessings of healthy cooking. We pray, please guide us as we conduct the show and be with us all we ask this in your holy name. Amen. Okay, I'm going to start uh, with mixed vegetables and uh, in vegetables we have peas, we have potatoes, we have carrots, we have cauliflower and uh, you know I'm going to start it, uh, you know I'm going to add one tablespoon olive oil and I'm going to cook in olive oil, uh, as you all know it's very healthy. We only put one tablespoon? Yeah, we're going to use only one tablespoon. Okay. You know, after this, you know, as oil is getting heated up, and we're going to add onion here, onion in here. Yeah. You need one medium size onion. You know, chop it well, and uh, you know, as oil has heated up, you know, we're going to stir it. Yeah. When it becomes light brown, you know, we're going to add. Uh, garlic ginger paste in it. Yeah. That should be uh, one tablespoon. Okay. So, Mehta, what are the benefits of ginger and garlic paste? Yeah, it, it's a, it's an immunity booster. Yeah, uh, especially garlic. You know, it's used uh, in the treatment of hypertension and uh, the people who are facing cardiac problem. You know, in our culture and different culture, you know, people use garlic as a med medicine. So we're going to add one tablespoon garlic, uh, ginger paste in it. You know, this uh, onion has become light brown. So we'll add one tablespoon ginger garlic paste in it. And we're going to Fry it for a while. The smell is very nice of ginger, garlic, and onion. Yeah. Very good. So now I am going to add tomato in. Yes, well, you just need one medium size okay. tomato. So you might have observed, you know, I'm using these uh, clay pots and plates. You know, these all uh, utensils are made from clay. You know, this is our traditional style of cooking. Yeah, mostly uh, in our villages, you know, we cook in clay pots. So I'm cooking in this clay pot. So it's time to add some spices in it. Okay. Uh, we will use salt one tablespoon. You know, uh, salt is also rich in minerals. Okay. But we can also put it with uh, as we require. Yes, yeah, as your taste, you know, you can add salt in it. Okay. We can increase or decrease salt or as we like. 
So we're going to add red chili. Red chili powder? Yeah. Okay. It's one tablespoon. Sorry, one teaspoon. We'll add half teaspoon turmeric powder. And what is the benefit of this turmeric powder? You know, turmeric uh, powder you know, is used uh, as an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. And it's also good for our brain and body. Yeah. So, now we, I'm going to... add some water in it? Not right now. Okay. You know, when I will add the, uh, these vegetables, you know, this vegetable will release some water and then uh, we're going to cook with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to add potato in it. And what is the quantity of potatoes? Yeah, one medium size. Okay. So, we're going to add this cauliflower. This uh, 200 grams. Okay. And what about the calories of cauliflower and the benefits of it? Yeah, see, these are all vegetables that I'm using today. They're, they're rich in white vitamins, like vitamins. This uh, cauliflower uh, has 50 calories per 200 gram. Okay. And um, now I'm going to add carrots. How many carrots you put in it? Yeah, I'm using only one carrot uh, okay. in this curry. And um, one carrot equals to like uh, 78 uh, calories it has. You know, you know, I have now mixed all the vegetables. You know, I'm going to load the flame. And, uh, it looks so yummy. And uh, I'm going to steam it for seven to ten minutes. Okay, uh, seven to just ten remember minutes. the flame should be very low. Okay. You know, uh, this curry should be cooked uh, in vegetables, water. You know, the, the vegetable will release some water, and this uh, curry will be cooked uh, in that water. So just remember to lower your flame. So we will uh, wait uh, for seven to ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. Let so we will steam. not put add some water from outside. No, no, we are not going to use uh, water at all. Okay. So uh, just remember to lower your flame. Next, I'm going to prepare uh, chapati uh, for you. And uh, in our culture, in our language, we call it roti. And I'm going to take two cup flour and I'm going to add a little salt to taste. Add some water in it. You know, it's better you know, um, use lukewarm water. And what is the preparation time for this dough? You know, preparation uh, time for this dough, you know, uh, you know when uh, dough is ready, you know, you have to leave for five to ten minutes. Okay. You just leave it. You know, after that, you can make uh, chapati. After five to ten minutes? Ten minutes, yeah. Okay. After that, we can uh, make a chapati, roti. You know, I've kneaded the dough. You know. This is the, if you don't mind, if you, if you can see yeah. the curry. Okay. Mmm, the smell is very amazing. It looks so healthy and yummy. Oh, that's good. Our curry is almost ready. Uh, Mrs. Nia, if you don't mind if you can help me in making a uh, roti. Okay, I will. Yeah, uh, this is griddle. You know, it should uh, be mopped up before putting a roti in it. And this is roller pin and then this is a wooden board. So we have used whole grain flour. And 
cup cup sugar and then a yogurt bread and okay. it's very refreshing and as it is summer and in summer you know we take it a lot of lassi nowadays you know this is a clay pot and uh, this is hand blender and uh, usually we use hand blender and nowadays we have uh, electric blenders and you, know, you can use that also you know if you don't find uh, these gadgets you know we we're going to take like 400 grams of yogurt plain yogurt plain yogurt okay Mom Nayab and uh, the chef is Sir Netab. I'm not sure, but uh, thank you very much for. Uh, it's like a uh, a real cooking show. <laughs> That's with that setting, and um, 
Ma'am Nayab, can you please introduce the chef? Is he here? No, no, he's not here. He's on her job. Okay. So uh, with that, thank you very much, Ma'am Nayab. And uh, we're you. very happy because the ingredients that were used are available here in the Philippines and also the other countries. So we all can uh, do that in our kitchen and everything is so easy to do. So do we have any questions? Okay, uh, I think we have one here for Mom Neyab. Uh, which is better to drink water or to eat a fruit? Uh, I think drink water. <laughs> Okay, so, um, so do we have any additional uh, questions? You can write it down in our Q&A tab. Okay, uh, so with that, the utensils we used. Uh, yes, the, Yes, I just uh, add the utensils we used in cooking is made of clay. Uh, clay is important nutrients like calcium, phosphorus, iron, magnesium, and sulfur. Uh, to add in food also. So that's why we're using the clay pots and plates and bowls. Yes, I forgot to, um, to, uh, to mention the utensils that were used. They were all, they were all authentic and uh, they were all uh, handmade by clay, as yes. what Mam Neyab has said. So, Ma'am Nayab, thank you very much for that. So, so with that, I would like to uh, present to you a, a certificate of appreciation. The certificate of appreciation is uh, given to um, Ma'am Meta, uh, Sir Meta Barkey, the chef, for your outstanding performance in the cooking show section of the Virtual International Vegetarian Cooking Show. We sincerely appreciate your efficient and detailed way of demonstrating to us the proper way to prepare and cook vegetarian and vegan meals, such as mixed vegetable curry, flat bread, yogurt drink, given this ninth day of July, 2020. Signed by our president, Pastor Samuel Saw, our executive secretary, Sir Rudy Baloyo, Treasurer Max Langi, and our Health Ministries Director, Dr. Maria Rizalinsi Alfanos. So thank you very much, Ma'am Nayab, and please uh, send our thanks and regards to Sir Metab. Thank you, thank you so much. So the recipes are, are already available. So Miss Jessica has already put the link in the chat box. You can check it there if you can find it in our Facebook, uh, in your Facebook. And um, it will be available, even the recipes from the fir first session is available already. So now let us move on to um, the second to the last we have here um, from Singapore. Um, Sir Eric Teo, um, are you around? Um, please introduce to us the, the recipe and um, the chef who will be cooking in the show. Sir Teo. Hi. Um, have we selected which recipe uh, will you be showing or I'll be showing this from my end? Pardon, sir? Will you be showing what you have recorded or I'll be showing yes, from sir, my end? Yes, sir. We will be showing it. Uh, okay, good. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, basically, a uh, few years back, the... Uh, folks in Singapore, uh, Hope Channel Singapore, decided to do something because we usually have recipe from the West and uh, a lot of ingredients cannot be found uh, locally in Singapore. And uh, people in Singapore are usually busy, don't have much time to do cooking. So that's why there was a team of people actually decided to do a few recipes and they call it a heart healthy kitchen. Uh, reason being whatever that's being used is meant to be uh, uh, beneficial for, for your heart. Yes, they are not the uh, cooks uh, that have a lot of nutritional knowledge. So what I did was uh, to actually link them up uh, with whatever creative recipes that they have. And uh, they are all vet through 
by a few nutritionists or dietitian so that at least they know that uh, they can tweak it in order to make it very healthy. That was one of the aim of these uh, recipes. And secondly is uh, all the ingredients uh, will be something that can be easily found in Singapore uh, so that it is uh, uh, something that anyone who wants to adopt it can actually use them. And lastly, uh, the purpose is also to be quick and easy. Uh, as I mentioned just now earlier, that uh, a lot of people just like to have a way to quickly cook something and uh, ensure that it's healthy and be able to replicate it. So the, the, the recipe that you will be viewing later on will be something that is meant for two person. So it's like a couple wanting to, to cook for two person. But if you want to make it for more, you can actually either uh, double or triple the recipe. So this is the intent. So it comes from a couple of people. So I, I can't show you who are the cooks, but it's just that it was contributed by a few people and vet through by a dietitian and with the main purpose of what I described just now. Yeah, so uh, enjoy it.
So thank you very much for that video. Thank you also Hope Channel Singapore for producing the videos and for sharing it with us. Um, thank you also Sir Eric Teo. Sir Eric is also the health director of Singapore. So do you have um, any questions regarding the recipes? Okay, I guess we don't have any questions, but if you have any questions, you can write it down in our Q&A tab. Sir Eric, thank you very much for the, the videos that are wonderfully made and uh, they are very appetizing. They are simple yet very appetizing. So for that, sir, yes, sir. Uh, there are actually many more recipes. So for those that are interested, you can just visit Hope Channel Singapore website and uh, you can actually see the recipes and the videos and other nutritional information from there. Okay, thank you, sir. So for that, we would like to give the certificates of appreciation from Southern Asia Pacific Division. Yes. Okay, so uh, I think we will be giving it later to you, Sir Eric. So um, with that, thank you very much. Um, thank you. The Health uh, Ministries um, Department of Singapore, Sir Eric, thank you very much. And uh, with that, we will now proceed to the, the last one for today. For today's session, we have um, here in the Philippines, from Mindanao, from a Southern Philippines Union Conference. Um, we have uh, Mom Lovely Buscato, who will be introducing the recipe and the chef. Mom Lovely? Uh, yes. Uh, Doc De La Cruz would be introducing the chefs and okay, the presenters for. De La Cruz, Master De La Cruz is the health director of the Southern Philippine Union Conference. So um, I will now giving you the time, Pastor, uh, Pastor De La Cruz. Uh, thank you very much, Ma'am Tisha. Uh, this is from the South Philippine Union Conference Health Ministries Director. Uh, and in collaboration and co in partnership with the Hope Channel South Philippines, we would like to present to you our chef. First one, I would like to introduce to you, Mom Jade Yero Sobrenio is a multimedia communicator specializing in promoting Adventist Christian endeavors for community service and holistic well-being. She received her nursing license in 2006 and a master's degree in public health in 2017. And Mamke is our uh, communication associate director of the South Philippine Union Conference. And together with her, I would like to introduce Mom Joy De La Pena, the better half of our 1,000 missionary coordinator of the South Philippine Union Conference. They are our chef today and we are happy to present to you our recipes, namely our main course is uh, coming from, it's called the Sultan Kudarat uh, Delight. And our uh, salad come from, it is called by Serapinang uh, Salad. And our soup, it is called the Ala Valley Soup. Now I would like to give the time to our uh, chef, Mom Jade and Mom Sereno in their cooking demonstration.
experience being neither Western nor Eastern, but an exciting blending of foreign cultures with the indigenous palate. years of Spanish rule, a number of decades by Americans, a few years by the Japanese, Chinese settlers, even some Mexican, and here in Mindanao, close neighbors from Indonesia and Malaysia had strong influence on the food in the archipelago. The typical indigenous diet revolves around the local fruits and vegetables, and Mindanao has a lot of them, including the freshest seafood. Welcome to Mindanao, the Philippines' second largest island and the land of promise. I'm Joy. And I'm Jade. And together we are going to take you to a gastronomical journey to explore the different flavors of South Philippines. Mom Joy and myself are wearing the tribal attires of just two of close to 20 indigenous tribes of Mindanao, excluding the Muslim groups. And today we are going to prepare the favorite recipes of the region, including the creamy coconut milk, the abundant cassava, leaves, the nourishing tropical squash, and of course the refreshing cucumber and watermelon. You will want to come visit us soon. So how about it? Let's try this. we have a recipe that comes all the way to the south of the country, Sultan Kudarat. Okay, so that has a Muslim ring to it because it is mostly a Muslim place here in Mindanao. And what's our recipe here called? It's Sultan Kudarat Delight and our main ingredient, Mam Joy. Sultan Kudarat Delight. We named this recipe as a salute to the Philippines' most powerful sultan in history, Muhammad Dipatuan Kudarat. At the time when the Spaniards have already colonized the northern islands, Luzon and Visayas, Sultan Kudarat relentlessly fended off the Spaniards from advancing into their goal of ruling Mindanao by winning multiple battles against them, as well as through his successful alliances with neighboring sultanates of Sulu, Brunei, Indonesia, and Malaysia, and rallying together the other local leaders of the island to stand up to the colonizers. A fearless warrior, a shrewd statesman, and master strategists like Sultan Kudarat would have enjoyed a hearty meal after a long day at work with this dish from the leaves of the abundant cassava, softened in rich coconut milk. A delightful treat fit for a leader considered as God's shadow. ingredient here for those who love that spicy feel chili and of course coconut milk coconut milk is rich in fat but it's actually no cholesterol and it can even give you or stimulate weight loss according to experts so it's a great addition and especially it will give you that creamy nice feel in your tongue okay so what do we do with our leaves ma'am 
Okay, we are going to chop the cassava leaves. And then we put rock salt and mix yeah. thoroughly and allow the salt to draw out the liquid from the leaves and then we take out the leaves and then you can throw away that liquid part because that could be the toxic part. That's why it's not advisable to eat cassava leaves raw. So that is what we're gonna do so that we would not have some adverse effect in eating our cassava leaves. So that step is very important for your safety. And then after we chop the leaves and throw away the liquid, we're going to mix all these spices, our onions, ginger, garlic, tomatoes. We mix it up in a pot and then we're going to put it on over the flame and put in our coconut milk. All right, so we pureed our coconut flesh twice and this is the second one, which is thinner than the first one. Okay, we're gonna place it over our mixture there. All right, we've put in two cups of that second puree from our coconut and we need to let it bring to a boil until it will absorb all of our coconut milk. Only then we're going to add the first puree of our coconut. And we've already put salt here, so th that depends on your preference. So if you want lesser salt, that's fine. And we can also put in our chili. It will take about 30 minutes to bring this to a boil until finally it will absorb all its liquid. So very slowly, we're going to do that. Okay, since coconut milk is thicker than water, it is necessary to mix your pot every now and then to avoid your vegetables from sticking to the pot. Now after 30 minutes, our pot has sufficiently dried up from our second coconut meal. And so here, we're ready to put in the first and much thicker coconut milk. Now after 30 minutes, once the pot has already dried up, we are going to put in the first puree of our coconut because it's much thicker and this will give our leaves an even creamier texture to it. Our southern tribes also love salads, but this one we have named it from one of the barangays or places in Sultan Kudarat, also in South Philippines. So this one, we call it Bay Saripinang Salad. Bay Saripinang Salad. Bay is an Islamic or Mindanaoan indigenous people's address to a female tribal leader. And Saripinang was one such lady. Bay Saripinang is now the name of a locality here in the South. And this recipe, which features an indigenous cooking technique. Bay Saripinang is one of the barangays in this area that has extensive plantations for banana export. That's why this recipe makes use of banana hearts for a savory and truly appetizing salad. For this recipe, Mam Joy grilled three banana blossoms. And after she was done in charcoal grilling these banana blossoms or banana hearts, it would look as if we have grilled a certain chunk of tuna, but it's not. It's banana blossom, it's banana heart, and it looks very nice with all these uh, charcoal. And we're going to take out this charcoal, remove them from our banana heart until we've, we've had only the flesh. And here, Mom Joy chopped it up and mix it up with rock salts, yes. Mix thoroughly and the liquid that will come out from that, she's going to get rid of. Okay, there she goes, squeezing them out. 
to remove the liquid. So we're going to slice this up because this is what's going to uh, compose the majority of our dressing. And you can also put in chili here if you want that spicy feel. Once again, going to make use of coconut milk, freshly squeezed coconut milk. So this will be a salad that will give you some good fats and some vitamins and antioxidants and lots of uh, texture and uh, protein and fiber to make you have that filling, a filling sensation when you have your meal. salad and it's time for our soup and we've called it valley in south cotabato it's called ala valley ala is the arabic name for god and so this is essentially called god's valley so this is where the recipe comes from because they love mung beans and we've added tropical squash ala valley soup ala is the arabic for god and this valley has a river running through it. The water in this area is vital for supplying the irrigation system of some 16,000 hectares of rice fields. A watershed development project here in recent years saw the land a flourishing green again after decades of denudation. To celebrate this fluid victory, we came up with this recipe, which includes a little bit more liquid in your meal, with a rich current of protein and better carotene, among others. So we are going to steam the squash for a few minutes, about 15 minutes. And of course, we've also boiled our mung beans. And we're going to blend this up together with our ginger, garlic, salt, and later our topping is our onion chives. We're going to blend it for a smooth texture to complement our salad and our main course. complete without a refreshing beverage and a cool dessert. So we will have one and this one will use ingredients that will remind you of the beautiful beaches of the Philippines. The first one is beachside smoothie and what do you see along the coasts of Mindanao? Lots of coconuts. Beachside smoothie. Mindanao isn't as popular as a beach destination compared to the provinces of Luzon and Visayas. However, this works in favor of the region as the developments are few and scattered, giving the beaches an idyllic atmosphere that some places have lost because of fast and sprawling development. This also means we have plenty more of refreshing coconuts by the beach paired with a cooling cucumber and the sweetness leveled up by the ubiquitous banana, 
and you have a drink that's as cool and relaxing as our pristine beaches, untouched by commercialism. So we're going to use young coconut for our smoothie, one or two pieces, and refreshing cucumbers for the cooling effect, and sweet bananas. They have to be extra ripe. These will be your sweeteners. So depending on your taste or your sugar or sweet preference, then you can add bananas as much as you like. So we are going to slice your cucumbers and then blend all of these. Your cucumber, your young coconut meat, and, or your bujo, and of course, the water from your coconut. So put all of your fresh ingredients into your trusty blender. All right, there you go, your bujo or young coconut with your fresh cucumbers. Half or an entire piece will do. And our bananas, they need to be extra ripe. So again, if you want it sweeter, you can add more bananas. And to get this thing moving, we need our fresh young coconut water. Watermelon Sarbet As a tropical island, the year-round heat calls for some serious cooling strategies like swimming in any of the unending beaches, lakes, and waterfalls. Mindanao is home to the Limonsudan Falls with an approximate height of 800 feet or 240 meters. It is the highest waterfall in the Philippines. It is located in Iligan City. And the second largest lake in the country, Lake Lanao, gushes forth as the mighty Agus River that feeds the legendary Maria Cristina Falls. Towards the east is one of the nation's most scenic wonders, the Jose Abad Santos Falls, which grazes the gateway to a 200-hectare national park development. These are just some of the many tempting sites to cool off, but homebound due to the pandemic? For now, we can dream of these refreshing bodies of water with the official fruit of summer, watermelon, in this must-try dessert. After Mam Joy chopped our watermelon, you can actually remove the seeds if you prefer, but I try to just put them along in the blender because I also like having the seeds in them. Okay, so we are going to add our one fourth cup of fresh calamansi juice to enhance the flavor of our watermelon and a pinch of salt. We use sea salt again to enhance the flavor of our fruit and we could blend all these so once you're already happy with how sweet it is then you can put it in a pan there you go and then cover this with cling wrap and freeze overnight
it. The distinct flavors of South Philippines. Rich, creamy, refreshingly nutritious. Please try these recipes and let us know how your food preparation experience has been. This is Jade. And I'm Joy. Dakang salamat sa inyong pagpagiguban ka namo. Mau pia! Thank you very much, Ma'am Joy and Ma'am Jade, for that um, interesting uh, video, the thirst-quenching juices and the, the appetizing dishes you have shared to us. So um, before uh, anything else, do we have any questions regarding the, the recipes that has been shared in the video? So I guess you do not have. So Mom Joy and Mom Jade, um, thank you very much for gracing the video with your uh, recipes all the way from South Philippines, Mindanao. So Mom, um, please unmute your mics. Kindly unmute, Mom Jade, please. We can't hear you, ma'am. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. All right, so we're very happy. I'm joining myself. Uh, privileged to have been uh, presenters for our recipes, and we hope you would indeed try them and uh, get a taste of the South Philippines. Thank you very much, Mom Joy and Mom Jade. So uh, because of that, we will be presenting to you a certificate of appreciation from Southern Asia Pacific Division Health Ministries Department to Mom Joy L. De La Pena for your outstanding performance yeah. Yeah. and Mom Jade Serena in the cooking show section of the Virtual Cooking International Sincerely appreciate your efficient and detailed way of demonstrating to us proper way to prepare and cook vegetarian and vegan meals. Sultan Kudarat Delight, Ala Valley Soup, Bai Saripinang Salad, Watermelon Sorbet, and Beachside Smoothie. Given this ninth day of July 2020, signed by our President, Pastor Samuel Saw, Executive Secretary, Pastor Rudy Baloyo, Treasurer Sir Max Langi and our Health Ministries Director, Dr. Maria Rizalin C. Alfanoso. So thank you very much, ma'am, and to the Hope Channel uh, South Philippines, thank you very much. And also, we would like to present a certificate to Dr. Eric Citeo. So, okay. So Dr. Eric Teo, we would like to present this certificate of appreciation for your outstanding performance in the cooking show section of the Virtual International Vegetarian Cooking Show. We sincerely appreciate your efficient and detailed way of demonstrating to us the proper way to prepare and cook vegetarian and vegan meals given this ninth day of July, 2020. Signed by our President, Pastor Samuel Saw, Executive Secretary, Sir Rudy Baloyo, Treasurer, Sir Max Langi, and our very own Health Ministries Director, Dr. Maria Rizaline C. Alfanoso. So that ends our cooking show this afternoon. So this is the second session. Thank you to all our chefs. Thank you very much for um, promoting healthy lifestyle through simple cooking and healthy recipes. So now I will be giving the time to Dr. Laleen Alfanoso for further promotion and announcement. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Keisha. Thank you. And thank you to all of you who joined us um, here in the uh, Zoom platform as well as uh, through 
the Facebook page of the Adventist Health Ministry, Southern Asia Pacific Division. We certainly would like to thank especially the chef, the presenters, our lecturer who um, share their cooking skills as well as uh, the recipes. Um, I would like to assure you that everything will be uploaded. Uh, the videos of the cooking uh, show will be uploaded in the YouTube channel of uh, the Health Ministries Department of Southern Asia Pacific Division. The um, recipes and um, le the lecture, the PowerPoint presentation of our lecturers will also be uploaded in the Facebook page of Adventist Health Ministries of Southern Asia Pacific Division. Actually, it's already there. So after this cooking show, maybe you can go to our Facebook page as well as in the YouTube channel of Southern Asia Pacific Division Health Ministries Department, and you can find the recipes as well as the videos there, okay? And then we would like to invite all of you Next Thursday, that's June 16, Dr. Cherry Nor Ibora Kalbayan will be the lecturer and she will be talking to us about the topic, the lecture, uh, the topic of her lecture is about immune boosting diet. So that's one, uh, um, one topic that is really um, really very, very interesting. And there are a lot of you who requested that that topic should be talked to. So we requested Dr. Ibora to talk about that topic. And then there will be four countries who will, who will present. And that are, those are Bangladesh, care of Dr. Leeton Hadler, Myanmar, care of Pastor Saucer Ney, Thailand, care of Pastor Concrete Incomon, and the Philippines, um, care of Dr. Glenn Maipa. And again, our guest, uh, young chef, uh, Onyx Dekila, will also be showing to us some of her nutritious cooking, um, cooking uh, recipe. So again, I'd like to thank you and invite you again to please uh, invite more friends, okay? This is not uh, this is not only for the Seventh Day Adventist community, but we also would like to extend our invitation to those friends, okay, in your community, um, our co-workers, our workers in the Seventh Day Adventist institution, your friends, your family members, especially the church members. Okay, again, thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next week. Now, Keisha. Let's have our closing prayer. Okay, so for our closing prayer, shall we all uh, bow our heads for our prayer? Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you for this uh, wonderful time that uh, we have for um, learning again uh, more recipes that uh, will be vital for our health and um, for um, the recipes that will be for um, for the furtherance of, uh, of our lives. And I also pray, dear Lord, that uh, may these uh, recipes be, um, be practiced in the kitchen, dear Lord, so that every one of us will be healthy. Dear Lord, may you also continue